Good morning. So, of course, it's quite intimidating to uh, follow Tim Harford's wonderful uh, keynote, but hopefully I'll be able to pick up on some of the themes he mentioned um, and, and expand uh, into these new domains that I think, well, certainly the people in the room are presumably curious about, but I want to sort of take you know, one of Tim's C's the curiosity, what did he have? Curious, calmness, curiosity, and context. If we could bring all of that to the fields of data science and artificial intelligence, um, then I think the world would be in a much better place than it has been for the last six months in this space. And one of the routes that we're going to do that through is this new journal. Um, I was trying to work out how how often the Royal Statistical Society launches journals? The answer is not very often, but because it sort of reorganized its journals a few times, it's, it's quite hard, and there's been some merge with the Institute of Statistics and Significance was a journal and isn't, is, is not considered as part of the RSSD anymore. It's quite hard to tell, but it's not common for the Royal Statistical Society to launch a new journal. So this is a big moment. And if you look at historical big moments, when you start getting, uh, you know, the origins of RSSB go back to the 1930s, the sort of moments where you've got the rise of mathematical statistics, these are significant moments in the history of data. So I want to start by um, building on something Tim said. This quote I always find fascinating because, of course, it predates mathematical statistics. The lies you can tell with statistics can be told when there is no rigorous way of understanding data. And the field of mathematical statistics, as embraced by the RSS, is what allows us to tell when those lies are being told, alongside the context, which is absolutely critical. But I think the real challenge we're facing today, so the best origin of this quote I can find is uh, Arthur Balfour in the Manchester Guardian in the late 19th century. Um, but he's actually quoting someone else as having said it. I think the modern equivalent of that is, of course, lies, damn lies, and generative AI. In many senses, it looks different. But in many senses, to those of us who care about data and numbers, it's the same problem that Tim was just talking about, but being presented in a new way. And this magic of this new way of presenting this new form of almost misinformation in terms of what this technology is, is misleading the whole of society. Those of us in this room know that this is still fundamentally based on three things, data, evidence, and decisions. Those three things being at what the core of this society has been doing for nearly 200 years. So why a new journal? Well, first journal dating back to 1838, so it's not quite there at the formation of the society, but it's, it's emerging rapidly. Um, but we recognize the need, and I have to say, largely driven under Sylvia Richardson's presidency, um, to look to a new journal to represent this changing landscape. But not just represent this changing landscape in the way that so many other groups are doing, oh, there's money there, there's, there's fame there, there's, there's more clicks on Twitter there. There needs to be rigor there. There needs to be rigor and understanding. So what we'd like this journal to do is bring that rigor and understanding to unify various AI and data science fields, to ground them with the rigor that we always see there with statistics to combine technical details with important questions and applications so of general interest. So you're looking at papers in this journal that will be informative. If you're in computer vision, you'd be happy to read a paper in this journal because it will tell you something about your area, even if it's not a computer vision paper. And to facilitate critical questions about emerging technologies. We're in a situation at the moment where statistics, which I believe in many of the origins of the term, is the science of state, is being pushed aside at a moment where various think tanks are telling us we should revolutionize the entire state on the back of AI, on the back of a poorly understood technology. Now, if you want to understand what the consequences of this would be 
without rigorous grounding and understanding, you only have to look at the Horizon scandal. Because the Horizon scandal, why it's not about AI per se, it's about the digitization and the removal of human responsibility for decision making in an area accounting that was, has been done by humans for thousands of years without an understanding of what downstream effects that could have. If you think about the wholesale replacement of decision making by AI systems, removing that key thing Tim was talking about, context, that can only come from the human within our state decision making mechanisms, you're talking about sowing the seeds of 10,000 horizon scandals. So this is vitally important for our whole society. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're looking at bringing together high quality papers of broad interest. So in areas across the spectrum, machine learning, statistics, these are sister fields. They always have been across my period. Of course, they have different philosophies, slightly different approaches. But as we go forward, the closeness between these fields is more important than ever before. So many of the questions that historically statistics cared about because they affected policy, they affected major decisions about how we respond to epidemics, pandemics, how we respond to um, uh, whether we accept drugs into our ecosystem. The rigor that we need to understand these decisions now needs to urgently be brought to machine learning algorithms as well. But beyond that, computer vision, language processing, bioinformatics, econometrics, and more. So the journal is going to focus on papers that present robust technical content. So that's key to what we should be doing here. But address significant questions of, or concepts of broad interest and demonstrate important applications. What we really need to bring to this is this critical perspectives on emerging technologies. That means looking at responsible algorithms so that bring robustness, fairness, privacy in these algorithms. The techniques of that are so similar to the techniques and tools of mathematical statistics, and the understanding that's there is closely related. One of the most absurd things you'll hear people say on Twitter is, we don't understand how these algorithms work. We don't understand how this happens. Well, we can't do anything about that. I mean, that's so clearly not true when, when you look at the human body and you look at the complexity of the human body, which we dose with drugs. And how do we ensure that when we're doing that, we're doing that safely, even if we don't understand all the mechanisms that are operating that body, we use statistics. We use classical statistical methodologies. Now, it's clear and obvious that as you're deploying complex algorithms that are difficult to summarize in a simple way, it's not that we don't understand what we're doing, but they're difficult to summarize in a simple way, the tools of statistical methodology become vital in giving you that understanding. So the reliability of those data-driven decisions, data evidence decisions, it's right at the core there. Now, the data may be different. It might not be you know, a randomized controlled trial. It might, not be, it might not be surveillance data. It's data of different forms. We need to understand these types of data and ensure that we're making reliable decisions on the back of them or understand when these, when these indications are not reliable. So how are we going to deliver this? So to deliver this journal, we've assembled a distinguished editorial board um, led by uh, Sylvia Chiappa, uh, and Sash Mukherjee, and I should also highlight particularly Sash's role in bringing uh, the journal about. He worked closely with Sylvia and, and has been you know, a real operational driver of the journal, and, and myself. Um, but we are going to lean heavily on editorial board members. When we're looking at how we want to operate the journal, we will be doing a lot of desk projects. We'll be doing, we do not want to dismiss the technical content of a paper, but there will be a sense that we're looking at certain papers saying, no, that's not quite the right fit. We're looking for a different paper. We'll be trying to do a very quick turnaround on those papers so those papers can go elsewhere. So fast turnaround, and in order to rely on the opinion of those, it becomes very sensitive to who our editorial board members are. So we've been careful to start with a smallish editorial board, but with broad expertise in this area that have a good understanding of the rigor of statistics, a good understanding of the applications of machine learning uh, and AI and the domains. Um, and so this is our sort of list. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 editorial boards members at launch. And that's kept purposefully 
reasonably small so that we can see how well that's working, so that we can ensure that we're giving quick turnarounds, but we're getting rigor and the type of papers that uh, we would like to be representing the best in class work in this area. So the expertise covering is machine learning and AI, statistical methodology, biostatistics, computational biology, natural language processing, neuroimaging, causal inference, or of course areas which also have one foot in statistical domain. So from a perspective of the open access and submission policy, the journal's fully open access, and we're gonna follow a submission policy very similar to the journal machine learning research, um, which has accept submissions published at workshops or conferences already, permit preprint publication. So that's very much the tradition in machine learning and AI. Even if a paper has been published in a conference, the basis of that idea can be extended within a longer journal version. We have no problem with that. Or even if it's there on archive, we have no problem with that. And committed to rigorous peer review. So um, from a call for papers perspective, we're inviting submissions in novel methodologies in AI and ML, statistical approaches to big data, ethical considerations in data science, and interdisciplinary applications of AI and machine learning. So in conclusion, RSS, data science, and AI is a response from this society to the change in how data is being used because whatever you see people talking about AI or data science or whatever it is just how data is being used or how data is being misused and we feel strongly that there needs to be a journal of record that is run by a scientific society where the editors are practicing scientists in these domain who have a deep understanding of what the methodologies are can't be easily manipulated by the sort of big tech PR that we often see in these papers and are committed to delivering the rigor we need for the future of data, evidence, and decision making. And I'll turn over to questions there. Thank you.